Make sure to turn on your camera. So far, I've only seen one, but nobody there. It's just the background, I guess. No red one. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. Two, three, four, five. All right. So uh, I'll guess we'll start with chapter two now, which is on setting up a sustainable energy management system. Okay, so first and foremost, again, this will be a very dry topic. A little bit, I, I can elab uh, elaborate on, on this a little bit, but not so much because it is still a theoretical part. But uh, it's very crucial chapter here because this is what you're going to use to, what do you say, how, how do you say, to show where you are, where you are right now, especially on the energy metrics because energy metric is the one that you set up the baseline for you to uh, to see the improvement that you've made lah. so again like any other problems in order for you to improve on the problems you need to be able to know where you are what's the quantifiable value that you can measure and also uh, where i mean before you can move you have to know the basic problem lah, where it's located how you can address it and also uh, how much have you improved as you go along the energy management program okay so this is where the topic it will be delved into but uh, again it's still a theoretical part so just bear with me yeah okay hold on Okay, so the topic that we're going to cover, the subchapter, are uh, effective tool for appraising methodology to prepare setting up ENI and integration. Is it this one? Yeah. Integration of uh, energy management system into business practice. So the first two chapters are going to be uh, a bit okay, but the last two chapters are the one that's going to be a lot of there's going to be a lot of words uh, so it's going to be a bit you know a bit dry okay so first we look at the tools what are the tools that you're going to need to appraise where you are right now it's not on how uh, it's not on when you're going to do it but more on to appraise where the, the what's the current situation of your company is so these are the tools that to, uh, for you to set up the base so basically you need the first thing to evaluate where you are right now is energy management metrics uh, these are the one that you're going to in your proposal later on at the end of the semester that you need to come up with uh, you have to show energy management metrics so okay before i proceed uh, your your group project your mini project which you need to submit at the end of the semester is a make uh, you have to kind of like a make believe company uh, maybe you can imagine yourself like a consultant like the consultant of a company or maybe you can imagine yourself like part of the organization where you uh, 
provide energy uh, where your boss has asked you to provide uh, an energy management program lah in your company so uh, i believe the data my colleagues has already come a few i've come up with a few because last time when i uh, when we ask student to do it uh, it's not that hard i mean actually you can actually google the energy management energy management uh, sorry energy consumption of a company you can just google it you can actually got, got it from the internet but i guess uh the finding was it's much more convenient if we can provide you with the data but of course it also depends on the availability of the data because if i'm not mistaken uh my colleagues planning to get the data from bpf uh, the one managing the solar panel in UATM Tengganu. So it depends on them whether they want to share it or not because it's kind of confidential, industrial confidential uh, stuff. So well, we are working on that, but supposedly we plan to use that data for you guys to do your mini project. Lah. So it's much easier so that you guys can focus more on the on the energy management program itself rather than understand data uh, getting the data but uh, even if you once you got the data the first thing that you got to do before you introduce or propose a energy management program is to set up the energy management metrics so this will become the base oh sorry gambar tu besar sangat abang ya tak nampak where is my OBS? Sorry, I didn't notice this. Oh, okay. I understand why. Okay. I've maximized the window, so apparently I can't do that because my OBS has been set up such that it only captures the minimized version okay sorry yeah so uh but the 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 what i've have, I have just said is basically still applicable lah. meaning once you got the data you have to first establish where your company is right now so chances are if you're using the data from your attempt to do if we got it eh, depends on dpf juga, eh? Kami approach, tapi whether they want to entertain tak tu up to them lah. Sebab uh, it's confidential punya maklumat. So uh, if we got the data, you still need to have the you need to set up the energy management metrics from the what do you call that from the from the period before we use the solar panel. So you have to set up the energy management metrics to show that. Basically, after you've done some studies, uh, make believe, eh? make believe, kono -kono, you make uh, studies and you've done the, all the basis necessary apa, uh, precaution, uh, sorry, uh, steps to, to incorporate energy management metrics. Finally, you've come up with a solution to introduce solar panel in your item and Ganu and therefore been able to produce this much savings. Lah. Uh, so, two examples yang saya boleh bagi for your mini project later on but the first thing again for any kind of energy management program you have to set up energy management metrics you have to draw it uh, i'll later i'll try to show to you how to use the energy management metrics okay then once you have got that set up energy management metrics next you will need to set up the energy policy energy committee set up and also all the EM component. So uh, EM component basically may not be solar panel as a whole, but maybe just the sensors, maybe data logger, because you need to measure. Uh, basically, when you're talking about energy management, it's not about uh, installing the high, the the most expensive solar panel or wind turbine or nuclear technology in your company but more on measuring because in order for you to show that you have saved some electricity bills, you have to know some numbers. Lah. In order to get that numbers, basically you have to tap 
the existing line if not using the nb meter because the nb meter typically it will just uh as oh, what do you say how do you say it? um accumulate all the build the whole building when you electrical consumption so you might not get the exact the location of where I mean, tak tepat lah maksudnya. but the whole building it can involve even the toilet phone uh, is under the nb punya bill the uh, meter so if you use solely depends on the nb punya meter chances are you won't be able to identify which area that needs to improve which area that has already been doing good because you remember if you recall last uh, slide uh, last uh, lecture even under gsv uh, each department have their own contribution towards electricity bill consumption so if you lump, lump sum it all and put it under 10 B meter, chances are you will not be able to identify which department is doing a good job, which departments need to improve, and which are have no change at all, meaning they are, don't even do energy management program at their department. So that is why you need to have a data logger and tap them at the main line coming into the department to show to you to give you the numbers basically to make sure to keep uh, basically to keep up with the kpi lah, key performance indicator so uh, all this said it falls under energy manager lah, basically to set all this up and uh, and then again you're not you'll not be doing this on your own typically you have a committee lah. and uh, once you have that numbers chances are you'll be able to set up your energy policy lah to indicate because energy policy will be the whole organization punya uh, commitment so once you got the numbers you'll be able to uh, set a target lah. maybe 40 percent decrease 30 percent decrease depending on depending on the current consumption electricity yang uh, you've measured the yang you detect the building where okay so once you've got that dealt with uh, you can submit this to Suruhanjaya Tenaga or uh, what is the name and, uh, Energy Commission. If you've done all this and let's say lah, your boss only uh, only want to to stop it here. They don't want you to pursue any more any more cost. Uh, they don't want to contribute. Uh, they don't want to give you any more funding for you to pursue extra energy management program because they are stuck with I mean yelah sekarang zaman susah katalah kalau kena COVID so dia pun tak ada duit dah sangat so he, if but at least he complies because right now typically bila boss dia dah suruh ni dia dah dapat notice under regulation 16 tu lah yang kita dah bincang last week if I'm not mistaken uh, dia dapat notice daripada dia suruhnya itu lah so at the very least he or she has already complied with that uh, notification so at the very least you set up the policy committee and the young component that shows that company are working towards energy management maybe at the current moment maybe tahun ni and tahun depan dia tak ada capital sangat so tak boleh nak spend duit sangat on energy management program but it's okay as long as you've set up all that three uh, preparation punya level tu you'll be able to get one star emgs you, as long as you submit the report to Suhan Jaya Tenang je lah. And then apa? Uh, and energy committee. But uh, itulah that you can get your, uh, EMGS from AMAS, one star. Uh, and then boleh tampal lah dekat your company punya website ke apa ke to show that your company is taking care. I mean, I mean it's a bit of marketing lah. It's the same like ISO. If you recall, there's a few eklan from company yang sebut tampal ISO. We comply to the standard, standard, standard. So it looks a bit official, but uh, to what end? It's not so much on a quality product. Apa. It's more on the trying to show that they are professionals. Of course, if you have the branding, branding, I think business, uh, business when you graduate pun agree lah branding is most important lah in kind, any kind of business it's not the person behind it it's the branding so if you can add 
sam macam kita lah kalau ada nama tu ada doktor ke ada PM apa profesor ke depan tu most probably orang pandang tinggi sikit lah padahal lok-lok je tapi uh, ada label tu ada penting juga eh so that's why some company consider this is quite ni eh apa dia tak nak spend duit tapi once you have that EMGS punya start typically dia akan tampal dekat dia punya branding company lah so tu normal lah tu company boss-boss Okay, and then after you have done that, let's say you want to implement and the boss agrees, then give you some capital to do it. Then you can do detailed uh, audit energy, energy audit. Uh, and then you can uh, apa, set up the target and plan and also SIT, site inspection test. Uh, basically audit lah. So, and also technical training and whatnot lah. So, this is where you do the action once you've got Typically lah, basically you need some funding lah from commitment lah basically. Commitment in terms of funding from your top management to do all this. Uh, this one, nak tak nak memang kena ada funding. Sebab you have to enforce people to do the the dirty work. Whereby the preparation is only a pointing and maybe a minor still you need some capital to especially on setting up the EM component. So data logger tu mahal tu, beribu dekat tu harga dia. But at least uh, it does not involve the whole organization yet. It's only you and your team. But this one, for the implementation, the whole organization. So, uh, capital lagi tinggi lah. Nak bayar overtime lah. And continuous for one whole year or six months at the very least. Because uh, reporting is six months eh? Every six months. So, uh, at the very least, nak bayar uh, apa? paling mahal dalam company is not the machine. It's more on the human capital. If I'm not mistaken, I'm betulkan saya kalau salah. Because uh, kalau company itu kecil, okay lah. Fine, you can say that the machine can be more mahal than capital, human capital. But typically, if your company have been served with regulation 16 under apa, electrical consumption more than 3 million kilowatt hours, I would say at least your company have 100 people lah, or 50 people lah under your care. 50 people meaning satu bangunan tu lah. Eh. So, I would say human capital dia lagi mahal lah daripada machine. So, for six months nak bayar OT lah, gaji apa semua, I would think it would be much more expensive than uh, you know, maintaining a machine. So, however, if your company have managed to come up with the capital to solve until, uh, to implement energy conservation measures, and you submit the report to Suranjaya Tenaga Energy Committee, then you get two stars gold standard uh, to star and then uh, if let's say at the, at the last stage where you show that there's an audit being done accreditation integration into iso tpm or uh, this standard standard uh, basically what it's trying to say is there's auditing uh, and continuous uh, operation being shown in the report then you'll get three star so all of this if you manage to get uh, all of this, if you manage to do it until system integration, then typically after you have submit the report to ST, Suranjaya Tenaga, you'll be able to get EMGS gold standard 3D stock. And then uh, you can tampal lah at your bangunan apa, building, apa, building ke your company punya label ke for 3 star. So it shows that you guys are taking climate crisis very seriously and you're a very responsible company that trying to reduce wastage to the bare minimum. So it's, I'm not sure how effective this branding uh, in terms of labeling me, tapi uh, there are companies yang dah dapat and show it lah. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, for now, yang I can remember is UTM lah. UTM, they have uh, two star, I guess. So, so far, in terms of IPTA, I would say UITM will be leaders lah. Because UITM ada solar panel. Dah pasang dah. Orang lain tak, tak baru plan ke or maybe on the way ke but they stop at two star lah. Whereby UITM, kita belum dapat any kind of stars lagi because once dah pasang itu hari, terus MTO. 
but uh, apparently kalau the BPF team sepatutnya my team and my colleagues lah sepatutnya that day waktu kita orang start buat tapi biasalah uh, anything involving money projek yang juta-juta ni uh, typically akan ada orang yang hijack lah and bila when we did the stages until the summit to Sha'alam and apparently even though the effort was done by your TRHP eh, uh, Dr. Elmi, Dr. Elmi is part of my, dia ketua kita orang lah waktu that project is being proposed. So TRHP back then, uh, something you have to know eh, about Dr. Elmi, he's very motivated punya person. So dia bukan main-main lah, dia memang, I'm not sure what he tar what her, his target is but most of the thing that he did typically in terms of millions lah. Bukan uh, projek yang puluh-puluh ribu, yang grant setakat puluh-puluh ribu macam saya ni tak adalah. Ada memang ratus-ratus ribu or up to millions. So uh, the idea was actually his. The initial stages, even uh, proposal apa semua pun memang dia yang buat. Calculating budget apa semua memang dia yang buat. But tiba-tiba tengah jalan, present kat Syed Alam, dapat approval tiba-tiba UITM holding masuk nah, and, and end up kami semua hmm, tengok je lah. <laughs> so uh, I think it's a normal thing lah dalam any kind of business corporate. So that's why apa orang cakap sibuk nak naik tangga corporate ni you have to ready for back steps lah. So I'm not saying we are bitter sebab lepas ni nak maintain apa semua tu ah, orang agak pening pala lah. Kalau tak ada knowledge semata-mata nak duit dia memang jam lah orang. But uh, I would say at the very least from our part, we are happy lah dapat tengok uh, UITM. Uh, most probably will be able to get EMGS provided they did the paperwork. So hopefully the, when they took the project out from our hands, they have the responsibility to, you know, to pursue this uh, EM management. But ultimately, uh, the reason why we proposed to use solar panel was for us to show electricity bill the savings. So rather than just show it like that, might as well get all the necessary uh, labeling or apa ni lah, uh, apa nama? Uh, certification and whatnot. So uh, lah, label, apa, promoting UITM juga lah kan to show that bukan Melayu ni sebenarnya bukan malas. Even though we don't have competi competition in terms of other races in UATM, but Melayu isn't typically pemalas lah. So having that label is actually a good image lah for UATM. Hopefully lah, don't follow eh. Don't pursue that uh, that roadmap yang kami dah prepare. Okay, in any case, back to the subject. Uh, so in order to evaluate the EM because right now we are still in evaluating whether our company is in a good position to implement EM or EM is energy management eh? whether we are in a good position to implement EM or not is based on these six elements first you have to have energy policy second you have to have energy team third you have to have motivation and training practices Fourth, you have to have information, marketing, and finally, investment criteria of uh, EC projects. Notice how I said investment is the last is the last uh, element, but actually no, it can be in any terms and any steps. Yang, uh, you have lah. Let's say your company is a big company and they provide you with a lot of uh, funding, so you can pursue investment first. It's up to you, but typically people will start with the easier one, lah, which is energy policy and energy team. Uh, but uh, this is in no hierarchy. Eh? That means you can start with any kind of the, there's no I mean, ranking. Eh? You can just do on your own, uh, which you believe is much uh, convenient for you guys. Lah. If you have the funding and you want, uh, maybe the funding to a time frame, ke, then you can start with the from investment dulu lah, rather than energy policy or energy team. Tapi typically even though time frame pendek pun orang akan siapkan team dulu lah sebab takkan nak buat kerja seorang-seorang kan nak buat proposal tu typically going to be kalau sambil-sambil buat kerja lain tu mau sebulan juga tu siap proposal. Okay so 
first we look into the tools which is the energy management matrix so what is energy management matrix is just the tool to evaluate where are you in that um, not you yourself but the organization in terms of en electrical energy consumption notice i said electrical energy consumption not water bills not uh typically to the lab bill kan eh? uh, air dengan uh, apa nama electrical bill so macam rumah kita if you notice our electricity bill is the most uh, the biggest budget lah that you have to spend in terms of uh, uh, bill monthly and you have to pay electricity bill typically around maybe paling mahal pun i, I would think 20 rm20 itu tak tahu lah awak buat swimming pool ke apa ke tapi normally people would spend around 10 ringgit lah for your their electricity bill not more than that but for uh, sorry for water bill but for electricity bill if you have aircon if you have at least one aircon even you have to pay more than 60 bucks rm60 so berapa kali ganda daripada air api apa bill air tu so that's why i i have i'm saying that uh, in terms of energy management we are measuring electrical energy uh, consumption not water or other utility bills typically water lah tak ada apa lagi dah so this is how it looks energy management matrix it's just the excel file lah kot boleh cakap excel file uh, bukan excel lah tapi it's a table where you plot where you are right now so let's so for example let me try and capture this and to show to you how to use it give me a second I'm trying to figure out i need to set this up to, to show to you an example of how to use it all right this okay so nak pakai senang je basically what you have to do is just uh, mark so let's say lah currently your company uh, you had just been served so that means uh, you had just been served under regulation 16 uh, after they found out that you are your company has been using 3 million kilowatt hours uh, for the consecutive six months the the last six months so typically that means your company doesn't have energy management team yet so that means uh, there's no energy efficiency implementation being done in the company and you're just starting up now okay let let take this uh, like let's take that scenario into consideration so yeah pagi -pagi ni, ini saya cepat, tapi i need to practice that so i'll keep on trying so uh energy policy again given that scenario there's no explicit policy so you can plot it like this just conteng nak tick ke nak tarik line ke apa ke it's up to you but for me i'll just circle it like this and energy team Again, there's no team, only you. Uh, but maybe lah, uh, you yourself. So even you yourself there, you can call it as any management team. But maybe part time because you're handling uh, the projects and your maybe your bosses don't want to engage outside this because they think okay, kita nak jaga confidential. Padahal tak nak bayar, tak nak bayar upah orang. So uh, only you, a part of your official job as a HR manager, for example you are also the energy manager so you circle this one okay and then motivation at the moment only informal contacts between uh, it's either it's either no contact or informal contact meaning uh, typically when you have that you when you're being served with regulation 16 notice too chances are your boss will call a meeting because if not then they will have to pay the apa ni denda apa semua so maybe your boss tak tahu so dia panggil meeting and baru ada informal or apa uh, discussion lah between an engineer and also uh, you yourself because it involves electricity bill kan eh? so maybe you as accounting lah bukan HR accounting 
So informal context only between engineer and a few users, which means engineer, you, and the boss. And information system, typically, currently, there are no information system because there's no electrical energy uh, consumption, electrical energy management program being implemented. So typically, there's no information yet because uh, there's no data logger, there's no, there's no auditing, there's no nothing whatsoever to measure except for the electricity bill yang you dapat every month lah. So currently, there's no information system, no accounting yet. Again, dah tak ada energy management program, what kind of marketing lah yang akan ada kan. So typically there's no ni lah, promotion of energy efficiency yet lah. Cuma baru part discussion, baru at the stage uh, discussion after dapat serve that notice. And then investment, uh, maybe at a low cost in measures taken considering you are now has been appointed as uh, part time punya energy manager. So they send you to a training to understand more on this uh, regulation 16. So, okay lah, adalah cost measure sebab for you to take up the energy manager cost, you have to pay, if I'm not mistaken, uh, thousand something or two thousand something. So, basically, it's just chump change lah for your company but still, uh, it's a cost. So, you put that under low cost. So, these are the graph that you can, uh, these are the line that you can draw like this. For uh, Actually, don't, don't make a curve like that lah, okay, let me put it proper because uh, there's a there's a graph that you need to refer to. Okay, so informal contact, uh, no information yet. Informal, uh, no, only no cost. Uh, so basically these are the energy metrics that, how it looks after your company. Okay, gambar rajah ni, the, 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 the curve ni, will be used for you to set up as the baseline later on. Uh, nanti kita akan tengok apa ya this, uh, this curve going to be important, why this curve is going to be important to us. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, after this slide. Okay, so kita tutup dulu yang ni. But the, basically, this is how you use your energy management metrics. Typically, people will use this at the start of the year. Meanings after they have implemented energy management metrics, they plot it at the start. And then after one year, they revisit this energy management metrics to show uh, what uh, to, to report the curve that has been done to, let's say, ST ke, your boss ke, to show that there is a progress and what's next to be done. And then maybe the third year after that, uh, revisit this energy management metrics again. Uh, and then plot any kind of uh, improvement that have been progresses that they have been done, whether there's a progress or not. Uh, so energy management metrics is important because it is a continuous process, although not that frequent lah. Maksudnya bukan tiap bulan buat. Maybe six months, uh, periodically six months in a year or typically people buat setahun sekali lah. Laju sangat pun nanti kang buat serabut je nak kena marah kenapa tak gerak, kenapa tak gerak je lah. Senang nak gerakkan management, management metrics ni. Uh, again, you have to wait for electricity bill lagi. You have to wait for commitment, apa, the installation of the equipment lagi, the strategic planning lagi. So, typically people work on what's done sekali lah. Okay, so, okay, remember eh. Uh, nanti saya share balik this, uh, this, uh, snapshot that I've done to compare to understand what is being shown here. Hold on, trying to talk here. Okay, uh, kita proceed with the next thing first, which is uh, the organization profile based on that uh, energy management metrics. Uh, sorry, the number. No, energy management metrics. So from that, you'll be able to get your organization profile. Uh, basically, yang they uh, explain here is the thing that I've shown just now, which is uh, the, it has six columns, uh, six columns, uh, five row, and you basically draw a line to all the metric cell. So that one that I've just did. Uh, remember, I, I circle and then I draw a line. So that's how you use it. So that line is actually the uh, the organization profile 
organizational profile of your company. So that's the profile of your company at that moment. The, the moment that you look into the energy management metrics at the start. Lah. So how to analyze the profile? Anal analysis of organization profile will indicate the strength and weakness. So they are zero to four being zero worse, four best. No. So zero means there's no nothing, there's no policy, there's no contact, there's no energy team. So zero is worse, four is the best. And different shapes of organizational profile imply different problems and may require a different way of solving it. So these are the lines that once you have set up, you need to refer to where you are right now. So I'm not sure if you can see from your side. Yeah, okay. So if everything is at four, you'll be able to see a straight line which means excellent performance just maintain lah. nothing to be to be apa, to be take no funding to be main uh, no funding to be added in no additional equipment need to be incorporated it's just maintain business as usual but also maintain lah energy management yang have been done meaning uh, operate the machine as per as per indicated set the target as per uh, try to achieve the target as per set just uh, previously so just maintain however like the one that we uh, we just draw we are not straight line at the lower standard so this one if case two your profile your organizational profile is at case two typically uh, you need to get more commitment lah. basically you need to kick start your project of energy management if it's U shape, then uh, it is suggested that you formulate formulate energy committee that set up commercial uh, sorry, sorry that set up uh, official communication channel. So basically, there's no marketing being done to your to your uh, subordinate. So you need to do more campaigning because remember, if you recall, uh, the middle section will be motivation information system and almost marketing so uh, you need to promote the energy management program more if it's n shape that means there's no commitment from your top management the number the number four here meanings all the sites which is there's no policy there's no funding so that means your top management is not involved with the I mean, they ask you to do it, but they don't want to be involved. That means they don't want to give you spending. They don't want to give you money. They don't want to give you uh, tools. Lah. So if then you have to show it to them, everything else uh, from your part have been done, has been done. It shows uh, all the motivation is there. People are motivated to do an energy management program because they found out that maybe they can get uh, benefit, added benefit. But the management yang tak nak buat. So, bukan salah korang lah. So, it's salah management lah eh. So, kalau salah, kalau kena saman ke apa ke, it's up to them lah to pay, not you. So, dia orang tak boleh marah awak lah. Ada record. Eh. And then, uh, if it's a true shape, like the one, okay, if I'm not mistaken, are we true? Not so much. Uh, through that means only a single column is significantly lower than the rest. Uh, it can be the center, it can be at the left or the right. So focus more on that specific area. Lah. So if it's just funding, try try to come up with a proposal to your top management. Okay, maybe you don't want to to fork out your own money. How about we do this? There are actually a few ways that you can propose to your uh, top management eh, in order for you to get the funding to uh, come up with energy management program, especially on, in renewable energy. And PIC. PIC is only one column that has shown very uh, significant uh, improvement. So that means all the other columns, uh, that means you have a lot of other works lah to be done. So not just uh, that particular. So focus on the, uh, more on the rest. Uh, but and, and balance is the one that we are focusing right now. We have only one, two, three, three columns that has one uh, level and others are zero. So that means at the start of the program, uh, 
we need to at the very least bring the lowest which is zero the one that we have zero to be uh, a little bit higher lah. the simpler one okay let me share with you again the windows capture okay this one so as you can see we have three one and three zero so if at the very least you can bring a uh, policy uh, formal energy up to level three then uh, it, it shows improvement quite a huge a huge improvement lah. and maybe uh, information system is also a, a good place to start because it involves the less amount of capital as well as energy policy so if you can bring up to two or three that should be good uh, that one for staff uh, you need to negotiate with your management lah. it's either they hire other outside outside people or they can just hire internal external or internal but if it's external chances are it will cost a lot more whereby internal um, it can cost a little bit but with at the cost of efficiency of the staff meaning the particular staff may have to submit other kind of reports for every other month now adding it adding another job to them so it may cost their productivity punya progress lah so uh, the company has to balance it out lah. but at the very least if you're able to bring energy policy and information system up to level three it's already good for you lah. but basically the advice is uh, to focus more on hold on let me put, is to focus more on uh, aspect that get lower score to try to bring them up so it doesn't have to be specific it's up to you which area that you want to increase but uh, typically this is what you will be seeing uh, at the start of your energy management program okay okay that is on setting up uh the the first the first level of what do you call that uh appraising energy management performance in that organization and we'll look into methodology for preparation of energy management system okay uh, we'll have another 10 minutes and then we'll take a break but uh let me power power on a, on a little bit because if i believe there's a few slides left so we might as well we power on through and then take a break after 10 minutes Okay, so energy policy i'll continue in a bit eh? again bear with me after this this is going to be very dry so just bear with me the okay, energy policy shall uh again like i've mentioned these are the easiest thing that you can show your commitment to uh to submit to energy uh, to submit to energy committee to show that your company is starting to look into energy management program to reduce their electrical energy consumption so these are the basic thing that you can do before uh, i mean to show to avoid getting fined by okay so the first thing is to set up energy policy so energy policy therefore to uh, what is energy policy the uh, element that need to be had is the uh, appropriate nature and scale of energy use basically to into to let them know that okay we, here we are right now and then you have to define clearly the area and the scope of what you want to implement maybe just reduce 30% uh, of uh, electrical energy in uh, half of the building for example not just the whole building because typically if you want to review the whole building it requires capital that is quite huge so maybe you just want to reduce half of it a uh, certain area only uh, but you have to clearly define and then state the commitment uh, which basically this is just to record your top management commitment lah. and then include commitment for continuous improvement because energy management program does not have to end uh, after getting audited typically because once you have been audited your boss will see that your electricity bill will reduce and uh, expect that it will be continuous lah because being able to save 100,000 per month is quite attractive eh, for a business owner I, I assume you guys would agree 
Okay, and in that energy policy shall also include commitment to allocate sufficient fund. Basically, this is to record your again your top management punya commitment uh, to document, implement, and promote throughout the organization the energy policy. Ini. And then regularly reviewed for continuing suitability. That means maybe you want at the end of it, typically people wants to introduce energy. Uh, uh, renewable energy to the company but maybe it's not suited for because Malaysia if you want to know Malaysia is not suited for wind turbine it has been found after studies being made uh, kita dah pernah letak satu wind turbine dekat pulau mana eh saya tak ingat Johor rasanya uh, bukan uh, bukan the, bukan the apa tourist punya attraction lah tapi uh, pulau in Johor and PNB found that our wind apa kalau wind punya kelajuan tu dia panggil knot eh kita punya wind knot isn't that isn't that huge lah compared to uh, european punya ataupun negara lain punya inilah wind, wind punya kelajuan so uh, it was found that in malaysia the amount of energy being produced doesn't justify the maintenance cost of uh, wind turbine so Malaysia memang awal-awal lagi dah terpaksa tolak wind turbine punya teknologi. So that's what it means by continuing suitability. Continuing suitability because if you're planning to use wind turbine in your company, chances are membazir duit je lah pasang wind turbine tu and it won't be able to produce uh, electricity. In Vern, in fact, dekat UITM Terengganu, we've also done pilot study sebab considering UITM Terengganu is tepi pantai, supposedly, and there are certain times in a year uh, where the wind is blowing quite hard. Uh, I can't give you the figures because I, I'm not the one doing the studies. Again, this is also under your TRHCP, Dr. Amy. Uh, punyalah dia trying to break the mold. So, uh, wind turbine, and if I'm not mistaken, after plotting the data, we've shown that kalau ada electrical energy being produced pun, due to being near to the beach, it's just maybe in a year tu one month punya total amount tu lah setahun ada 12 bulan only one month saja yang ada electricity being produced punya dah teruk uh, kat Malaysia ni dia punya angin so uh, even tu tepi pantai eh tak payah cerita lah if your company tengah-tengah bandar you want to put, uh, introduce uh, wind turbine memang memang bos you marah lah buat apa bayar sebab nak pasang wind turbine if I'm not mistaken it cost you around uh, few thousand juga lah, hundred thousand juga to set up the system fully but electricity bill being conserved is just one month in a whole year punya saving so typically it's not a good advice lah. So again in that energy policy has to be continuously being reviewed in case there's no the, the measure that you have introduced at the start of the year isn't actually contributing much into your electricity punya consumption. So uh, whether, so continuous uh, review of energy policy is required. Eh? Okay, so this is the recommended format uh, if you want to set up your ener uh, general energy policy. The first part is getting commitment. So that means the first part to be shown is the commitment of your top organization. So that's the first thing lah sebab tak guna they ask you to do it but they don't want to show they don't want to record that they are committed to do this because if they don't even want to record their commitment chances are uh, memang takkan dapat funding lah. So the first thing as an energy manager when you're trying to set up energy policy to show to a Suhanjaya Tenaga that you are trying to take uh, measures to uh, get energy, apa, to conserve electrical energy, you can conserve, uh, use electrical energy efficiently, is to get the commitment from your top management. Again, the company is theirs. Any in and out, any say so, any yes or no, it's totally up to them. So if they ask you to do it but they don't want to commit, no point lah. Baik. Uh, buat bodoh je lah lantikan tu. <laughs> so, uh, a, sam a sample of uh, apa ni? A definition, uh, 
the, sorry, the recommended format is then to say that the public expression of organization commitment to energy efficiency. Basically, it just has to say that your we, the top management, uh, we together with the top management are uh, committed to observe energy efficiency in this organization. Name, 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 name. Lah. And then detailed guideline to develop energy management system. Basically, a document concept or guideline to develop energy management that you have constructed uh, briefly, lah, maksudnya roughly, uh, how are you going to achieve uh, energy management system? So, either through training, either through uh, electrical energy consumption, either through uh, efficient, sorry, what do you call that? Uh, efficiently using or maybe periodically, periodical scheduling of uh, machine operation for example uh, so just the rough idea of how you're going to achieve uh, energy management program so first we look into commitment the part one where you have to get declaration from top management being signed by them and then a policy statement and also objective that you're trying to achieve so this is false under part one, which is expression of commitment and summary of principles. So again, under it, it, it keeps on repeating. That's why I'm saying this subchapter, this part is a very dry because it keeps on readdressing the need for top management commitment. I mean, for me, cukup lah cakap sekali kan, tapi biasalah. Uh, Maybe because after based on their experience getting the top management commitments ni ramai yang tak dapat ataupun ramai yang terlepas pandangkan I'm not sure but they keep on reiterating if you don't have uh, top management punya commitment might as well just forget about it lah ready je lah bayar saman so uh, basically for what is being defined as getting top management punya commitment is at the very least middle management punya involvement and above lah. So but typically the, those yang kena sign policy tu is your the most highest punya person lah which basically can either be CEO or the owner in themselves lah. Uh, that one can be considered as the most highest uh, top management so once you got the that uh, signature, chances are you'll be able to get a middle management involvement. Yeah, this is an example of the wording which mean, uh, which says that this site is committed to responsible energy management and wherever practical, we'll practice uh, energy efficiency throughout our, all our building, plant and equipment and then underneath it, signed by your CEO, owner or whoever that is the highest ranking person in that uh, organization. And then uh, expression of commitment and summary, uh, this is an example of it, which is to show that the, uh, the electrical energy consumption is being controlled to comply with any organization requirement to avoid an unnecessary expenditure, to improve cost effectiveness, productivity and working condition. So basically, uh, general idea of uh, the organization commitment towards observing apa ni lah, uh, macam mana dia implement uh, and apa, electrical management uh, statement of objective long term and short term hmm, ada contoh tak okay ha, ni uh, which is to increase staff awareness and ni baca sendiri lah I think uh, this is just the wordings that you can typically use dalam mini project nanti uh, you can type lah benda, benda ni and then but make sure if your company, kalau katalah eh, tak, kami tak dapat data daripada BPF tu and you have to come up with your own company, data, your own data, Google ni sebenarnya. Janganlah pula company yang awak buat tu company paper, company apa nama, yang menghasilkan kertas, producing paper, tiba-tiba to use fuel as efficiently as is practicable. Tak logik lah. Ke, apa, company paper mana yang pakai fuel pula Typically, kalau company paper ni, normally you will use uh, electricity plug-in je lah. Mana ada fuel. 
sebab mesin nak printing tu kan mesin nak printing mesin nak bulk apa semua tu i would assume I'm, i haven't worked with the company electric apa company producing paper but i would assume tak ada mesin dia lah yang pakai fuel except for yang uh, apa delivery apa semua tu ah tu dan cerita lah uh, tapi typically when you're paying electricity bill there is no machine producing paper that will uh, require fuel as the uh, gas lah basically as the apa energy consumption typically it will just electricity bill so please be more apa be more accurate lah in using this uh, wording if you want to use it and then this example for your uh, energy policy in your mini project later on okay and then uh, format uh, detail guideline the, what kind of action plan that you want to use uh, whose responsibility is it uh, the kind of uh, the line of communication that you can use resources statement of review procedures Okay, uh, I think we'll take a break for maybe 10 minutes before we'll continue. Um, so right now my watch is at 9 o'clock. We'll continue at 9.10. Okay. Thank you.
Okay, let's continue. Is everyone here? If you're here, please turn on the camera, yeah? All right, thank you. Okay, uh, we'll, we have just a few slides left, but uh, again, still a very dry subject. So I'll try my best to be sharp about it. But as you can see, uh, I'm not a morning person. So when it's uh, panjang sangat tu saya menggapai-gapai lah ayat lo. So again, but I still need to practice my English. So I'm sorry. <clears throat> okay, so uh, we'll continue with uh, part two, which is the detailed guideline. Uh, in here, we'll have an action plan, responsibilities, line of communication, resources, and statement of review procedures. So there will be an example of what are the wordings that you can use in that, uh, in this uh, part two here. Okay, so uh, the first being uh, the action plan, which define the timetable uh, to specify follow on to to meet uh, the action to meet the objective that uh, you have set. Uh. So an example here during the coming year, or maybe uh, I guess the better word would be in next year, the following management activities shall be undertaken. Uh, first, a detailed timetable with specific milestones, indication, and then second, indication of actions to be taken by designated personnel. So you name the person. Uh, indication of action ni, basically, they tak perlu go into detail yet because uh, it can be, maybe time tu tak, tak design lagi, or maybe uh, the action itself need reviewing every few months. So if you're doing energy policy and keep on changing it, nanti pening dengan orang. Lagipun energy policy ni is not that critical in the sense of observing energy consumption. So typically people will only review it once a year. So if every single action needs to be listed out, will be panjang lah nak tampal dekat dinding uh, your company. So might as well... Don't get into detail, just mention an action. Just mention the person who will observe the action because that person will be in charge and will be able to go into detail into it. Lah. But for now, just mention the personnel and the timetable to reach the milestones. And then responsibilities, basically uh, the energy management committee uh, which assign responsibility according to their department. Lah. So if you're HR, typically you'll be in charge of HR punya energy consumption. If you're production, then typically you'll be in charge of uh, machineries and whatnot. Lah. So the person name here will be the person who will be in charge for that particular department. So an example, responsibility for coordinating energy management activities reside with the energy manager and whose the name is. Responsibility for formulating and implementing energy policy lies with energy management committee. I mean, typically you can just plug it in and put it in your mini project later on because memang tu je pun energy management committee. And then uh, energy management committee will be made up of the plant manager, energy manager, uh, can be accounting manager, whatever lah. Tapi uh, specific for the department that you want to target. Okay, line of communication basically specified the line of internal and external communication for progress reporting or any kind of uh, issues that uh, need to be addressed. So you need to specify uh, who to report to and who to to for, for uh, who to submit the report to. So energy manager will make monthly report to energy management committee. So it shows here energy manager book and boss that the energy management committee to your boss because it involves a lot of uh, energy, manager, energy manager dalam organization. Even top management pun ada dalam energy management committee. Eh. It can be on energy management activities and progress towards targets. Formal communication matters relating to control of energy consumption will be directed to uh, each energy manager department. Lah. So if plant, then plant manager. Kalau you point the plant manager. 
if uh, accounting then accounting manager if law then law manager lah manager of department of law bukan law manager okay resources uh, specify the resources to implement so basically uh, it, in, it can be in terms of money and sense but dalam energy policy typically it will be more on uh, capital or personal human resource lah. Uh, the personnel <coughs> sorry the energy management company backed up by an energy manager and appropriate experienced personnel so because typically it's uh, because normally energy manager ni wouldn't have uh, technical technical expertise in operating a machine so uh, therefore it requires the backup by committee and also any kind of uh, experienced personnel typically the engineers lah. the charge man wiring wiring man or whoever but those who have technical expertise over the machine that they want to uh, to operate efficiently. So it's some sort of uh, commitment showed by the organization supported by top management to show that in order for you to do your work, you have to be supported by the committee and also the appropriate person. Not so much on nak kata you tak boleh buat kerja tapi lebih kepada nak dapatkan uh, support from the committee and uh, the charge man or wiring man or engineers that are in charge of the plan. Okay, statement of review procedures. This is basically to define the milestone and also the process to assess and as well as to address individual staff performance evaluation in terms of energy management consumption. And statement of review procedures, this is an example. All energy management activities will be subject to periodic. Ah, baca lah. Panjang-panjang tu. Basically, dalam contoh ni, it shows that the period, the, the periodic uh, review will be done annually and uh, circulated to appropriate uh, senior managers. Eh? And then, uh, combined policy uh, or Okay, this one is if you have additional policy from outside, external lah, basically. Uh, you want to observe, let's say, uh, what do you call that? Huh? Uh, safety and health. Uh, yeah, safety and health uh, under OSHA, Occupational Safety and Health uh, Act, OSHA. So they'll, they'll, they also have policy. Uh, this one, I'll, for OSHA, I think I have observed quite a few when I was working back in uh, oil and gas, uh, memang ditampal dekat setiap department, dinding tu ditampal OSHA punya policy. So you can add it in in your policy also uh, to make it more comprehensive because of course, uh, in, if you recall, for energy management, the first uh, factor that you need to observe is safety and health of the operation of the person operating it and also the machinery. So it is a complementary punya policy lah that you can also tambah. Uh, but typically nowadays, I think most of uh, engineering, eh, engineering punya businesses, memang boleh nampak lah uh, for those yang maybe ada opportunities to work with uh, engineering company later on as their punya apa ni, business punya ni ke. I'll, I'll, I suspect you'll be able to see this policy from OSHA. And, and then, uh, of course, other kind of uh, objective-oriented policy set by your organization uh, it can also be put it in, into the energy policy that you have set up. Uh, so that uh, people tak, apa, nampak, tak bersepah lah, nampak sekali one shot, tak sekali. So orang boleh nampak how committed we are as an organization to observe this kind of policy. So an example of objective-oriented policy uh, to consume energy in the most efficient, economic, environmentally responsible ways to possibly to possibly minimize waste. So apply the latest and best technologies. Uh, ni objective-oriented policy ni uh, for this one is more scattered toward more catered towards energy uh, consumption. So uh, it's more direct and more specific lah to whatever that you're trying to serve. For example, if you want to save, uh, save uh, electricity bill on the machine that you're trying to use, uh, you can put it, put it in here. Or maybe you just want to address the whole uh, building, punya, 
whole building punya electrical consumption, then you can also put it in here in a very specific manner. For example, uh, to apply the latest and best technologies and practices for uh, electrical energy consumption of uh, uh, building A two two one A. For example, uh, let's say lah, like, uh, you if I'm not mistaken, if you went to Gebeng, apa nama tu? Dekat Kuantan tu. China, mainland China ada buka company kilang dekat uh, kawasan tu. If you tengok, ada banyak building dia. Uh, so maybe, let's say lah one day you work with, you work there and that you will serve with. I'm not sure what the deal is between Najib and China back then because that was under Najib back then. They punya deal dengan China. Whether they are under ST punya rule or not. But if they are, because I suspect their electrical energy consumption will be more than 3 million kilowatt hours. Because tengoklah berapa, berapa, berapa besar kilang dia tu. So if let's say they are falls under Malaysian regulation, under ST, so they will be served. And maybe one day you work with them and uh, to avoid getting penalized, uh, the company ask you to do some energy management program. And uh, It turns out this specific building dia yang contribute that much towards electrical energy consumption. So you can put under objective or policy uh, to consume energy in the most efficient way and then to apply latest and best technology and practices in building A, A, B, 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 Because apparently 90% of your electrical consumption sebenarnya datang pada building tu dia which I think is logical because The other building in the company, it seems more like residential punya company, apa, building je. So residential punya building, typically electricity bill, even though they're corn and semua pun, will not cost you more than, uh, apa ni lah, a few thousand. Tapi the machinery yang, the other part of the bangunan, if I'm not mistaken, is quite a huge machinery tau. So uh, I would assume that one will be significant lah, electricity bill there. So you can, if let's say I want to work there and it falls under Malaysian government punya regulation, uh, then uh, you can specific on that building only. So you can put it under objective oriented policy uh, under your electrical energy policy punya uh, subdivision lah dalam dalam tu. Okay, then we look into uh, in general, in order for you to devise the policy, uh, you must consult Uh, get and uh, you must be able to receive criticism ke or maybe just uh, sorry just get uh, involvement from other other department punya ni lah so that to get their contribution because biasalah manusia bila dia rasa dia ada contribution dia ada interest lah to observe so when they have that kind of Uh, feeling from a human being typically you will be able to get their acceptance like even though they have one or two things that they don't agree with if as long as they have some contribution they have their interest lah in that policy to be accepted so therefore try to uh, try your best to get uh, input from other department and then put it in into the energy policy in the long run so that it can, it can gain acceptance And then the departmental representative should be involved because uh, each department has their own niche that they might want to observe even though uh, energy policy trying to address all. That specific department may need a specific kind of needs to observe uh, that they can't negotiate. So try as, as best as you could to, to involve this dep departmental representative so that they could communicate with you the things that you don't know about in their department. And then uh, consultation period is the time to start building commitment uh, throughout the organization. So this consultation period is what we call period time nak kita nak apa ni lah, draft the energy policy. So this is the time to build a rapport between all the departmental heads and for them to basically once they have their input, you will be able to get their commitment lah. Okay, then we look into energy management committee because this will be the main uh, grad kerja lah, the main workforce in uh, deciding whether your energy management program or energy management action will be 
impactful or not. So the main responsibility of this committee is to set up, manage the activities uh, surrounding energy management program. Uh, according to the energy management working procedures agreed by the whole organization. So, ini bukan detector punya ni lah. So, basically, it involves the whole organization. So, when it says in the whole organization, therefore, participation from the whole organization lah. Therefore, uh, committee ni should involve all the respective organization punya. punya. Tapi, biasalah, biasa bila kita involve ramai orang, mungkin banyak suara. So, takut nanti kang uh, tak berjalan lah. Bila orang ni kata ni, orang ni kata ni, end up konflik end up nak buat energy policy pun tak dapat. Uh, so you typically will still have to have somebody who has the authority over all of them which is the top management. Right? So recommended functions of the committee uh, again energy manager kerja dia tak habis. Energy management committee pun kerja dia tak habis because uh, not only uh, they they won't be the one who's be doing who will be doing all the nitty and gritty details of the energy management program action, but they are the one who approve, they assess to come up with the uh, plan to prepare energy policy, and also uh, auditing. The, to plan the auditing, to prepare the auditing uh, procedures. EMWP is EM energy management working procedures eh? uh, because when you're talking about standards basically to observe safety you have to have procedures that everyone should follow so for example if you have a machine uh, contohnya boiler lah boiler bakar uh, fuel in order for you to get electricity you have to turn on the boiler not turn on boiler bukan simple simple as turn on the switch eh? uh, you have to observe the safety that means tutup latch dia dulu ke or maybe uh, to make sure serombong asap yang tepat asap keluar tu uh, there's some additive being added so that harmful apa harmful exhaust tu tak tak effect persekitaran punya hutan ke for example. Memang sekarang ni tak silap saya memang macam tu eh uh, dekat serombong asap dia, dia letak additive to make sure that the carbon monoxide being produced isn't uh, toxic to surrounding area so macam contoh uh, photos yang come from ladang-ladang kapur sawit tu biasalah bau-bau kapur sawit tu kan kan bau busuk kan so uh, typically they, itu pun sebenarnya they have already had additive dekat serombong asap orang so that bau tu tak terlalu kuat and asap tu tak terlalu hitam uh, so uh, ada prosedur-prosedur tu lah basically so even though the objective is to reduce electricity but uh, safe operation again, safe operation and uh, also tak kacau profitability company is the most important part that you have to observe. Therefore, kena ada energy management working procedures. So this falls under energy management committee in the scopes. Okay, and also uh, if there are any kind of uh, energy efficiency, EEI is energy efficiency index. Uh, what kind of action that you want to you to do? Uh, so you have to get appro uh, approval for committee. It, this is recommended. So committee is the one who approve. But of course, uh, kalau owner tu kata dia tak nak, dia nak dia yang jadi energy manager and dia yang approvekan everything bukan committee. Uh, up to him lah or her. So company dia kan nak gaduh dengan dia pahal pula kan. So dia dia yang sebab dia rasa boleh save the capital so dia nak jadi the person who's in charge tak nak kena tipu dengan orang lain so baguslah uh, dengan kerja awak and then uh, to disseminate the information approve booking procedures approve approve energy target and plan what not semua is suggested to be responsibility under energy committee lah but again it's up to the top management if they want to do it their own up to them Basically, they will then become the energy management committee. Lah. And uh, continue, uh, monitor implementation, support, approve, uh, organize and review. Basically, uh, like energy manager juga, uh, the work will not be finished. The same goes with energy management committee. Their work will also not be finished. Uh, because they will start, they, the work, they will handle the from ground zero up until 
a review process which will be done uh, at the end of the year or maybe possibility at the end of the reporting month, six months to the degree, and then restart back again for the next uh, uh, tahun yang berikut ataupun the next the next uh, proses apa ni the next stage lah sampai dapat three star and then even ada dapat three star pun you still have to maintain so still the committee have to apa ni perform their tasks yang mentioned recommended here so it is recommended that the structure of the EM committee uh, again it depends on the culture of the organization if it's dictatorship ah uh, then seorang je lah and then the committee tu Uh, energy manager je lah yang akan jadi dia punya sole person which is your owner ke most probably but if it's a democratic kind of uh, environment where the company is big huge then chances are all the senior management as well as the energy manager and energy manager should be part of it lah part of the energy management committee susah eh saya nak sebut English uh, EM committee ni energy management banyak kali Waktu saya macam slurry sikit ni, dah lah pagi-pagi Tak cukup tidur eh, semalam tidur lambat Tunggu suruh Okay, and then uh, recommended full structure The chairperson, uh, the, the the full structure of a committee should have a chairperson Should have a secretary, should have technical staff And should have administrative staff So in this four level Typically energy manager, energy manager will be the secretary So kalau biasa, I'm not sure how how exposed you are to a working culture. So when you're talking to secretary, when when you're talking about secretary, sebenarnya secretary bukan yang apa duduk office tekan-tekan tak tak keyboard ya. Yeah? No. In fact, dalam government punya body, ketua setiausaha negara, okay, SN, is almost as powerful as prime minister sebenarnya. Prime Minister of course dalam dalam TV, dalam uh, any kind of paper semua nampak macam ni powerful tapi uh, when menyuruh orang sebenarnya KSN ni yang menyuruh orang uh, apa? Ketua Setiausaha Negara uh, sebab PM dia hanya voice out sebab dia memang plan, dia memang execute uh, dia memang plan, dia memang strategize and he's the one who has the final say so but in terms of implementing the action and uh, getting people to do the work it falls under actually the secretary so that's why in any kind of organization secretary is almost the uh, almost as powerful lah, almost eh? as powerful as the owner themselves so about all the owner macam nabi lah uh, rasulullah yang paling powerful sebenarnya allah tapi uh, rasulullah lah yang second most powerful lah sebab dia menyampaikan kata-kata Allah tu kepada kita. For example lah eh, I'm not saying that I'm religious ke apa tapi uh, the architecture is almost the same. So chairperson will be somebody who has full authority, Allah, have good management and financial skill uh, sebab dia owner eh, dia nak kena tahu lah the balance of the company punya capital and what not and therefore executive management typically the owner or the top management or the board of directors lah. Uh, the resource person that uh, who should be the chair person. Secretary, uh, this one is but dia nak mengarah orang and therefore dia tak boleh kena tipu lah dengan orang-orang bawahan. So therefore he has to have proficiency in understanding the energy consumption process overall, uh, detailed implementation of energy management system, fair management and financial skill and good communication skill. So basically secretary ni lah yang paling tahu from top to bottom. Or if orang ada nak come up dengan dia, nak gaduh dengan dia Saya dah buat ni, saya buat ni Tapi kau dah buat ni tak? Ha, dia lah yang akan cakap Kau dah buat ni tak? So he has to be the energy manager lah He can be somebody from mid to senior management Again, he or she needs to have Some authority over other person yang buat kerja tu So therefore, sebab tu lah dia kena somebody yang Management level jugalah And then technical staff, uh, this one can be more than one person uh, because technical staff may involve lots of people to operate some of the machinery in that organization. So uh, it uh, he or she has to have proficiency to control the their representative area, have good technical knowledge, understand energy consumption of that particular area that they are in charge of have fair communication skills so that bila kita nak reporting tu tak adalah dia cakap itik, kita cakap ayam 
so everyone understand on the same page and have fair management and financial skill because uh, nanti katalah awak bagi funding kat dia tak naklah dia pergi pakai duit tu untuk kat benda yang tak kena apa yang tak uh, I mean efficiently use that fund lah to observe uh, energy management punya proses so it is uh, recommended that you appoint either the production, utility and, or maintenance engineer themselves lah. but typically engineer will have authority over technician uh, so the the apa, the rain trickle down lah. the wahyu tu trickle down and administrative stuff uh, this one is more on uh, not make sure all the process is being smoothened out uh, instruction has been smoothened out so the person can be human resource, public relation, accounting because well, once you got funding, not gonna manage the account, so might as well engage accountant. Dah ada dalam company itu pun. Kenapa engineer pula nak buat accounting kan? Nanti kang takutlah bersepah pula accounting paper tu. So might as well appoint the accountant as part of the energy management to make sure that the funding process, the paperwork has been filled up accordingly lah, according to the procedure. So this uh, stuff would uh, this uh, post and this administrative stuff require proficiency in authority for their respective area, good marketing skill, good human resource skill, and at the very least, and not the last, but uh, it is the last, but not the uh, not less critical, is good communication skill. So, what can you conclude here? In all these posts, if you able to see even though good communication skill is uh, orang kata tak nampak macam penting sangat tapi it's the most important skill that you need to have especially getting hired if you uh, maybe lah ada abang ke adik ke yang uh, maybe bekerja susah dapat kerja I notice it's because this good communication skill isn't their forte saya pernah dulu pergi interview uh, typically eh uh, I, myself, uh, when I went for interview, out of five, typically three will call back. I'm not saying I'm a good communication skill. I, I have a very perfect communication skill more. But based on my track record, if I went for five interviews, I will be able to get three callbacks. Uh, being offered to lain cerita lah. Callback so maknanya dia orang interested for me to go to the stage lah. Uh, so I owe that to good communication skill. Because you have to understand, no matter how GDPA tinggi awak, for flat every cent pun, grad dengan for flat pun, if you're annoying to the person that you're going to work with, chances are you will not be hired. So, try as best as you could to uh, practice that communication skill. Sebab itulah saya, even though saya dah, apa, English saya ni dah marah-baraban pagi ni, saya still want to practice my English. Because communication skill, because even though I'm already hired, I'm already uh, a lecturer having a good salary and whatnot, but I'll never know when the opportunity door will open. Um, I'm not sure when or how, but when it's open, I want to make sure that I'm ready. So that is why I'm always practice. I'll try my best to practice my communication skill. Uh, so be it with my family, of course dengan mak saya tak boleh lah saya tiba-tiba nak cakap English dengan mak saya macam kelakar lah pula dah berapa puluh tahun saya dengan dia tiba-tiba cakap English dengan dia memang dia tak layan lah dia. But uh, my family, my own family uh, dengan anak saya, I'll try my best to speak English with him or her, uh, him, anak saya seorang ni. So uh, in fact kadang-kadang anak saya yang cakap English dengan saya, not so much tapi at the same time uh, dia punya BM teruk pula. So, saya kena cakap banyak yang BM punya pula lah. So, communication skill as best as you could because uh, there's no point of you having the technical knowledge or even if you're good at managing business ke apa ke, if orang tu cakap Mandarin, you cakap Malay. Nampak sangat tak boleh buat kerja sama-sama. So, even ada Google Translate pun, it will not be, you will not be able to use your time efficiently communicating with the person. So, okay, saya menyimpang ni, but I want to highlight the the, the importance of communication. Uh, because when, uh, in my engineering punya section lah, especially memang teruk lah uh, communication skill ni sebab, sebab tu engineering, maybe sebab cakap dengan machine banyak sangat pun, I don't know lah. 
Tapi uh, when I get the feedback from the industry, what they told me is that graduate UITM typically uh, will be a little bit lower than overseas graduate, but maybe a bit higher lah than typical graduate in Malaysia. Uh, because in UITM, apparently, we practice a lot more presentation in English. So uh, that helps uh, a lot. But again, presentation and uh, everyday communication skill dengan co-workers is different thing. That, what, that is why I urge you to practice more on your English because in Malaysia, even though we are starting to work with China a little bit more, but we are still more on English as professional language. So communicating with other people will still require English, especially if it's a, what do you call that? Multinational company. Uh, well, multinational company lah, basically. Uh, so uh, I, I even had a chance to work with uh, other, other, other than Chinese in India, eh? Indian, in Malaysian, uh, but also uh, Australian, uh, Italian, and uh, I'm, I would, I, uh, again, uh, maybe I've told you this, but I find myself a little bit menggapai lah, cakap English in social context. So, because again, I haven't practiced my English that much. So, please, don't be shy because this is good for you to practice your English. Okay, so tu saja hari ni. Uh, if you have any question, we, you can interrupt me and ask me. But if not, then uh, we'll end our session today with Tazbik Farah and Subhanallah. Okay. Any question? No? All right. Uh, I wish you to have the uh, selamat menyambut di Pavali. Esok di Pavali eh. Saya semalam ingat hari ni di Pavali. So dah tak prepare lah rupanya hari ni ada kelas lagi. But anyway, uh, have a good weekend. Uh, have a good holiday and stay safe. For those who staying in Terengganu, elak-elakkan keluar sangat sebab musim hujan kan. Uh, nanti kan apa, patut sesemua takut nanti kan kena quarantine pula sebab takut COVID pula kan. So try as best as you could to uh, avoid getting demam lah. Banyak complication dia nanti. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for your time and be seeing you next week and hopefully everyone will be staying safe and not getting 